Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. We take you through the pages of a national dailies. Uh, it's been made available by a paper vendor. We have Openabon Katari, who's on standby. He joins us this morning via Zoom. Openabon, it's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. Happy holiday, it's my, by the way. It's my, it's my, pleasure, it's my pleasure, Mercy. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, then. Uh, let's take a look at the, the Punch newspaper together. Uh, on the Punch, how Tunubu shone Northwest governors and settled for Shatima, uh, that's the Borono State governor. Uh, you also have Northwest governors preferred one of them, Zulum turned down offer. Sources, you have Khan, Catholic Secretariat, fault Tunubu and one. Uh, against the Muslim Muslim ticket, saying that it's insensitive. You also have the former governor of Lagos State, Alang Fierce, saying religion, ethnicity cannot always determine our path. But has that not always determined our path? Uh, I'm sure that Okunabon Katara cannot wait to react to this. Terrorist demand 4.3 billion naira for Kaduna train hostages. This is what you find. Manufacturers threaten shutdown over soaring diesel price and FAC allocation drops to 2.1 trillion in three months. Court remands Bologna linked to carry drug deal. Again, you find IOCs to remit 400 billion naira oil debts in July. This is according to the NNPC. And fuel hits 250 naira per litre in Abuja, other cities and queues spread. Now, you know how this actually works. It would mean that the cost of transportation would also be on the high. I mean, what a time. We're looking at inflation, double digit, uh, almost eight years consecutively without, uh, you know, change. 17 bodies of Lagos leg... I take that again, 17 bodies of Lagos boat accident victims recovered and rainfall. Lagos resident laments flooding and transport fair hike. Another caption says, salad travelers, others trapped in Lagos Ibadan express traffic. My kidnappers threatened large scale attack on Yoruba land. That's what the victim is quoted to say. Uh, just before we move away from uh, the punch or should government candidate disagree on arms of Amotiku. And we quickly move away from the punch just as we look at the nation newspaper. Why I, set, I selected Shatima as running mate uh, by uh, the flag bearer, presidential flag bearer, Bola Ahmed. If we truly understand the challenges upon us as a nation, then we must see the imperative of placing competence in government above religious sentiment. Quite interesting. Uh, that's what the, pun uh, the nation, I beg your pardon, is quoted to say. Petrol scarcity persists in Lagos, Abuja, others. 17 more bodies recovered from the Lagos boat accident. APC will win conveniently or convincingly widows back a court party. DIG orders deployed. Committee preaches peace. That's the Oshun uh, 2022 elections. Now you find investors seek stoppage of the TTB's acquisition of Union Bank. That's another uh, business conversation. CBN tightens e-payment rules for banks. That's the much we have this morning on uh, the Nation newspaper. Well, that's how much we can take. Uh, we do have Okunabon Katara, who joins us via f Zoom this morning. Okunabon Katara, let's start off with the uh, one on the Punch newspaper. It talks about the APC having, uh, picking, you know, a vice presidential candidate for the party. Uh, how do you react and respond, you know, to his candidacy? To me, it is presageful. What I want to mean by presage, it is, it is ominous. And uh, it's an insult to Christians and uh, a complete disregard of the Nigerian feelings. 
We live in a country where you have religious divide, whether you like it or not, which is even accentuated, more pronounced recently under the present administration. We live in a country where the Christians believe they have been persecuted by Muslims. And that belief is being justified or bolstered by the killings going on in this country, in churches and what have you. What is Boko Haram? Boko Haram simply tells you we are adverse to Western style, Western paradigm of uh, living. That's what Boko Haram is all about. They are, they are adverse to it. And the Christians have embraced it. And so on a daily basis, uh, Christians, these uh, Muslims, we barbecue of Christians in churches, Without, we can, you can remember the number of Catholic priests that are already in captivity and what have you. So it will be very, very uh, happy for any Nigerian to disregard that divide, that uh, 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 discrimination between the Christians and the Muslims as pronounced by the Muslims themselves. You must address the sensitivity of Nigerians. We believe, yes, it's not that Nigeria is a secular state, but we believe that if you have a Christian as a president, your vice should be a Muslim, vice versa. And it has become a principle in Nigeria today, and not just Nigeria, in most civilized lives. So when I have that the choice of his vice president, presidential candidate, was planned and competent. I mean, he suffers from ethics of reason and poverty of logic. You have competent Christians in the north. I think Lalong is a Christian, Dogara is a Christian, and so on. You have competent ones. So even came up with this argument that after all, his wife is a Christian. His wife is not on the ballot. Yes, they say the vice president is also not on the ballot. But then it's a joint ticket. Whatever decision the wife takes is not going to affect Nigerians. And in politics, public perception index and public perception rating are crucial. You see, you must address the feelings of Nigerians if you want to be a leader. So if you ask yes, me in synopsis, this will definitely lead to Balatinibu has been started the political Makaba dance. And I can assure you that as we speak today, Christians will not vote for Balatinibu unless his uh, aficionados, his supporters are loyal, those that eat, uh, uh, enjoy the crumbs from his tables. No Christian, Khan has even come out to say, no Christian will at all vote for Bola Tinibu because I can tell you now that Chabu uh, of uh, what is Abiola Kiki Bay's uh, ticket. That argument does, is not tenable at all. Why is that argument not tenable? Then Nigerians were hankering. They wanted to end the military regime that was draconian. So they needed a breath of fresh air. And anything could have, anything was acceptable. And more so, the legitimacy uh, LK Abiola enjoyed cannot be enjoyed by any living Nigerian today. Well, but, but he, I mean, even with his so choice. It is very, very wrong for you to make such a comparison. My dear Messi, my dear Nigerians, I will stay here now to plead with Nigerians never ever to consider the volatilibus uh, uh, presidential uh, 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 be. Never. Because that will be Islamizing Nigeria. Look at what happened when the court ruled that hijab should be worn by uh, 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 Muslims. And you saw, you saw the, 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 the Ferrari generated. Because if you say hijab should be worn by Muslims, then we can also wear a tradition because hijab is a tradition, it's a religious attack. I can also wear my castle. The point I'm making is how sensitive religious matters are. And that is why they say Nigeria is a secular society. And it's unfortunate that Bola Tinibu 
has come further to widen the vision, the religious vision, and Nigerians are now definitely not going to vote for Bola Tinubu. No, but with the comments that has been attributed to him, he talks about understanding the challenges that's upon us as a nation. And then we must, uh, if we do, then we understand the need uh, for placing and the need of Merci. placing Merci. competence in, in, in government I above religious to sentiment. Competence, Merci, I told you in my opening statement. I said when it comes to competence, you have them. You have more Christians who are from the north, that are competent. Are you telling me that Shetima is the most competent person to be his vice presidential candidate? Are you telling me that Dogara is not competent? Are you also telling me that the Lalo and Co, the other ones are not competent? Please, that's why I said that you must suffer from ex and poverty of logic. You must address. Okay, look at the whole Ferrari that it has generated. Look at the tension it has generated. Nigerians are not going to buy it, and we, we can't swallow that rubbish. The truth is, Bola Tinibu has failed. He's now dancing his political macabre dance. Christians are not going to vote for Bola Tinibu, and I appeal to them not to vote for Bola Tinibu, because that is an attempt to Islamize this country. You must, as a leader, be sensitive, sensitive to the, to, to the people's feelings. If you're not sensitive, then you ask not to be a leader. And so Nigeria will not vote for Bola Tinibu. Well, let's move away from that now. As so you look at the, the Punch newspaper, fuel hits 250 naira per liter in uh, the FCT and other states as you have the queues. I mean, if you live in Lagos State, then you would understand what we're talking about. It's causing a lot of stress, you know, for those who reside here. Uh, but what are your thoughts? I mean, for a nation that, you know, would be described as one that is the biggest producer or producing nation, how, how can we get out of this? And when can we really get out of all of this stress? Uh, do you think that we can actually have a short-term plan? Or uh, what would also be the long-term plan to get out of all of this fuel crisis that we're faced with? My dear? This poor crisis that seems to be intractable is as a result of a microscopic few that are benefiting tremendously how? from the scarcity. When, when you say how, our refinery is working. It's as simple as that. We've been doing turn around maintenance. Now, every time we talk about turn around maintenance, and at the end of the day, nothing is turned around. That is the how. Why will, why will nothing be turned around? Because you have certain persons trying to stimulate the efforts of the turnaround maintenance. Because once the refinery starts working, then they'll be out of business. They cannot make their normal profit they are making. We're talking about monopoly. That is what is going on. And as we speak right now, I have a conviction that Mr. President is a beneficiary of that monopoly. Nobody can come and tell he's the minister for petroleum. So he takes the blame. And this was the same person who said within six months or thereabout, they are going to fix the refineries and we are not going to import uh, refined products anymore. How do you justify you produce, export, refine, and import? It is so ridiculous. I've never heard of this in my whole life. But when we have refineries in this country, the talk about turn around, even the turn around is another means to siphon money because nothing is turned around. So if there is a deliberate attack, you can, I can tell you, remember, there was once Nigerians went to Ghana and started opening shops for generators and so on. And the Ghanaian government came down heavily on them. Why? Because they wanted to jeopardize the electricity there so that their generator businesses would try. That is something that has happened in the oil industry. You have a few who are in charge of this product. Now look at this going for 200 or something, 250 naira per liter. I like you say, it's said in Lagos. But, 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 open a bank there's, there's also about, something. You can talk of Ukraine war. They talk of Ukraine war. That is the most ridiculous excuse I've ever had. But, but let's when also. There was war. We had, we had oil boom. Now you are talking of Ukraine war. Just like COVID. They say oh, the economy was slowed down by COVID. 
I think you did what the civilized countries did. Where are the palliatives? What steps did you take? <laughs> you did not do anything. You know, it's like I'm only in Messi, and tomorrow I come to you, come to me, the banks on strike before the new money transfer. The banks on strike, I tell you, oh, Messi. The banks on strike, oh. All of a sudden, they call up the strike. Open a bank, it's I give you another excuse. We have a royalist government, insensitive and callous government. People that don't bother. But my happiness, Messi, you might say no, I don't say it, but I'll say it. That was how we talked about security. My happiness is that the president's call boy was attacked. No, you can't. You can't say that. Open a bank, open a bank, Katara. You can't say that. You, can't say that. You, you you can't say that on national television. I mean, I beg that you take that. You know, you know, you have to take that statement. No, 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 no. I passed. I no. Let me not take it. It's passed. Now, said it is passed. Let me not take it. Let me not. Let me not swallow my vomit. Why would I swallow my vomit? No, it, it's not. It's not a good thing to say. Okay, okay let's see. That's right. That other citizens can be killed. Uh, but let's move away quickly from that. O open a bank, Katara. We were still talking about petrol and, you know, the issue. One minute. If you are a mother, Messi, you are more important to your child than the president? You are more important to your dependent than the president? Open a bank, Katara. Open a bank, Katara. The, the, the federal government is still saying that, the uh, you know, the fuel scarcity and, and the queues will persist until we fully deregulate and on the other hand you were talking about monopoly uh the government is saying that deregulation is what it is so we're just in here for a very long ride until we're fully deregulated uh what do you make of this because we had uh, uh timmy per silver making that statement over these, these um, are specials these are specials reasons reasons that on the surface by look intelligent, sound intelligent. But when you dig deep, they are as useless and as ridiculous as you can think. Okay, you know that is the panacea, the regulation. Are you just realizing that in the twilight of the administration? When you made a promise that well, within uh, one six months, one year, you are going to uh, turn around all the uh, refineries and we are not going to import fuel so that the price of fuel will drop. Is it now you're realizing that you need the regulation? And let us see how long the regulation will take. I tell you, what they are doing is coming out to excuse me because Mr. President himself is tired. So they come up with all these Fabian policies. I call them Fabian policies. Policies meant to tire the opposition. They come up with all these Fabian policies in order to buy time because they don't have time again. And so they tell you, oh, it's so sad, he's taking a long process, he's doing this, or oh, that, 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 we're out of office. The man is in a hurry to go. He has said it himself, that he cannot wait to leave. He has said it, so he's not of never saying it. And why is he saying it? Because he's been overwhelmed by the problems of this country. You know, it is easy to criticize. Now you've been given the mantle. There is nothing you can do. Your own is even worse than the man you criticize. So it's so sad. Let us leave that. The regulation, Nigerians are interested in buying fuel at the cheapest rate and without any encumbrance. That's what Nigerians are interested in. It's like people coming up and say the GDP and no GDP. What I want as a market, what is the business of the market woman with GDP? She wants food, food on her table. Don't go and tell give it to a market woman, my, my great grandma, my great grandmother who is a little child, tell her I give it to you. What's about the bloody ones that bloody millions of GDP? So we are not interested in all these steps. Why did you deregulate all this? Why? Why what happened? Why the why the uh, dilatoriness? Why? Is it now you are realizing it? He's the minister for petroleum, that's the president, he's the minister for petroleum. <laughs> So, but uh, open up, Katara, do you think deregulation is a solution? Well, when you deregulate the market, then you break the monopoly. Does that also trickle down? Does that also does that also, down, does that also, does that also I, trickle I, I, down to I'm having now, functional I'm refineries? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm answering, the, I'm answering the question. You break the monopoly message. Where do you see that? Normally, it ought to address the situation. Because competition sets in. Ordinarily, but we know what happens in this country. You will still have a cabal. 
in connivance with the government in charge of that. Just like what we have with PS, PSEG and PSCN and what have you. Is it not worse that when NEPA was in charge? When we have NEPA? Is it not worse? It's almost the same thing. So what will be different? What will be different? Because you have the cabal. There will be any sincerity and transparency in that due regulation. Otherwise, under the circumstances, yes, yeah, it would have been a panacea. But there will be transparency, there will be uh, uh, credibility in that due regulation process. So you still have the same cabal. You still cabal, but do you have the money? Do you have money? You have to compete with them. You still have the same cabal, and that is what is going to happen. So the situation might even be worse. It might be worse. The government will even tell you have to regulate. Those like PSC and PSG or whatever they call themselves. Whatever it is. That is what is going on. So Nigerians will be worse off. Nigerians will be worse off. But under the no circumstances, if you have a government in power that knows what to do and is sensitive to the plight of Nigerians, you, even if you don't do regulate, my dear, we are going to, the country will make enough money and Nigerians will buy fuel at a cheaper rate and without any hindrance. Well. But you have a rudderless government in power. That's the truth. Another one talks about uh, the fact that you have terrorists uh, demanding 4.3 billion naira for Kaduna uh, train hostages or uh, cap captivities. I mean, those who are in captivity right there. Uh, w what do you also make of this one? Because uh, some people say that the prison break, uh, the recent prison break is just, you know, compensation uh, was part of the demand that was made by this terrorist. And uh, however, it feels like it was an arrangement and uh, why would you have them also demanding this amount of money? I mean, what has it become? Is it that we cannot, we don't have what it takes, you know, to uh, tackle those persons who are causing unrest and uh, destroying lives and properties in our country? They demanded for four point something billion. Uh, that's small now. I thought they were going down for 200 billion. They are taking their own share. It's another way of taking their own share of oil money. I'm just being sarcastic before Nigerians misunderstand me. The truth is, like I've always said, the government is complicit. It was a military head of state who said, for a national crime to persist, the government is involved. And that is the late General Sanya Abacha. It wasn't said by Nabo. That is number one. Number two, we are all aware of the key blows with which these criminals are handled. Most of them who were in prison, we are, I think, they are awaiting trial. Not that they have not caught convictions. Why the delay? And again, you have the likes of Gumi who said this thing will not end unless they negotiate with these bandits. Kumi is moving freely. It's moving freely. You have a woman attacked, so-called ambassador, who said it was going to last for 20 years. Buddha is there to explain to Nigeria how and how he knew that this would last for 20 years. More so, in a situation where the national security advisor we had Buratai's uh, success, those who succeeded Buratai, and Co. came on air to say all the monies allocated to buy firearms and arms and ammunition that none was bought. Open up what say to It was NSA, corroborated by the service chiefs. What happened? He was rewarded with ambassadorial appointment. How do you expect this thing to end? And this also goes because it has a nexus with the issue of uh, Christian and Muslim tickets. Because this havoc is written on Nigeria by the so called Muslims. Those local Haram people. Rita, first, they said they were not Nigerians. Now they said they are Nigerians. My dear, I will not say that the situation has overwhelmed the country. No. I will say that the leaders are complicit. 
Where is that army captain or major that was arrested? If you remember, about a year or there about ago. That story I told you about, straight under the carpet. Where is he? Who was working hand in hand in Kahoot with these people? Because he's a Muslim. How's that man? Nothing again. He will not say anything again. How do you explain that? That's why I'm telling you that the government, not that they've been overwhelmed. Why is it that the government was not overwhelmed in the East? Whenever there's an uprising, they send the troops to crush people. Without a twinge of conscience, old women, children, girls are killed. And you see the soldiers, the just soldiers, happy, glory in the, in the crime you know, that they are committing. But when it comes to the North and so on, no, it's a different ballgame. The government is complicit, my dear. And until you have a government of rectitude that is prepared to address this issue, I bet you, in three months, they'll contain this insurgency. No insurgent can withstand the might of the federal government. But because the government what, 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 if, what if the federal government is, is not as mighty as we perceive? I mean, it's just possible that there's no might anyway. If you look at the military and uh, you look at you know, every security apparatus, it, it might just be it. What if we're just uh, you know, living highly of ourselves? Even if, the government, even if the government is not as strong as we perceive, which I impugn, I doubt, the government is. He said where he was the one under El uh, Chadari who repelled the attack without an in, in the imprimatur sure from Chadari, who was the president. And when he was cautioned, he said because they had invaders. What has changed? And even if they are not as competent, what will make you competent? Training. Get more people into the armed forces. At least more people. Provide the funds. You provided funds. What has happened? Those that embezzled the funds, you rewarded them. That was the first thing that said it. So I hope you are not going to be wrong. It was a public, it was a uh, press conference. NSA said it. Uh, the successor said it. So not of Nabu. Now the folks were embezzled. You rewarded them with the ambassador appointment. So how are you telling me? If you, you don't have the capacity, but you are globetrotting. If tomorrow now, the minister for works in Gabon, if his son dies tomorrow now, God forbid, he's having a wedding, Buhari will go. If tomorrow, the Cameroon, I'm not talking of the United States and so on, Cameroonian uh, 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 president, if his son is sick, Buhari will go. All the trees we both benefited. No one has we benefited. No but, one. but um, open up, Uncle Tara, before we move away to this the newspaper where we look at, you know, uh, the IOCs and the fact that it's been reported that they are killing local oil servicing companies. Let's talk about terrorist and negotiation. I mean, this is a popular saying that, you know, government would not or shouldn't negotiate with terrorists. But do you think that, you know, the Nigerian government gets into negotiation and conversation with this terrorist? How do you negotiate with terrorists? You can negotiate with militants and not terrorists. I hope you appreciate the distinction. Militants are not criminals. They are not. Militants are those who want to use political means to change the situation. They are not criminals. That's the mistake people make. You can negotiate with militants, or you can negotiate with terrorists. Why will I negotiate with terrorists? Why will I negotiate with terrorists? Are you saying go and see no more? How do you negotiate? With all the crimes, the lives they've lost, and you say go and see no more? Well, now, you don't negotiate. So, so, so do you, my, my question is, do you think that the Nigerian government negotiates with this terrorist? I mean, we see the release of this uh, bandits, whatever the other time. We, we, we know that, you know, um, generally speaking, there would be a uh, disclaimer saying, oh, we don't negotiate with terrorists, which is actually uh, universal language. I mean, government of different countries and of the world would say, you don't have to negotiate with terrorists. Nobody negotiates with terrorists. But, I mean, let's narrow it down to what's going on. Are we negotiating with terrorists in Nigeria? Uh, if you look at that, uh, you know, a lot of people saying that uh, the fact that there was a demand for the release of certain persons who were in, in captivity and, and, and the fact that you had a jailbreak at that particular time, 
it, it looks as if it was actually an inside job. It was planned. It, it was some side, sort of, you know, negotiation on but, agreement. But, that was put out. So my, my question is, do you think that in all of this that the Nigerian government negotiates with its terrorists? Mercy, they have been negotiating now. If you need to be told, they have been negotiating. One, they talk of uh, amnesty. They said that. If you remember when they said how many thousands of terrorists, how, they, how did they locate them? Have surrendered. They have joined their sins and presently approach the government. And now they are being rehabilitated. Do you remember? This was even just last year. Thousands of them. Is that not part of negotiation? And Aero 5 said after that whole process, they went back to the bush to continue with their terrorism. Aero 5 said that. Zulu said it and so on. Is that a negotiation we are talking about? Are you talking about the jailbreak? The jailbreak is orchestrated now. How can you justify? How do you explain? Oh God, no, God, How do you explain that over 300 persons on motorcycle and no security man could accost them? And you want the security barracks and call them? Oh, what is happening in this? 300. 300. How did they even know the number? How did they count that they were 300 men? Uh, men? How did they know? And they were telling them, how? You see, the whole thing was pre-rejected, so they came up with a figure. And when you lose count, by the time I want to hold to get it, in that state of fact, how, 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 how is it going to count? Even the soldiers that would have accosted them, it's not possible for them to count because they'll be busy shooting. So how do you know that they are telling them? And on motorcycle. These are not ants. So even if you see 300 ants, you, I mean, you know, that is visible. These are, they are not ants. That is the letter they are 300 on motorcycle. And they sustain for three good hours. They just told the military boys to hang up when they are done with this. I'll give you a story. When we militants were uh, on ramping for tacos, I called an assistant commissioner of police. He's late now. And I told him, I said, come. He said, oh. I just see they are saying, yeah, it's okay, we are, we are, we are preparing the uh, APC, I'm a, I'm a personal carrier. Oh, okay. So she mistaken me after one hour. I call her, oh. Then I now said, oh boy, what's happened now? You know what he said to me? He said, make a go die when now, don't be uh, 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 politicians arm them, so I will go die for my family. I said, but you said, yeah, you said, I found out with the APC. But what really happened now? When he told the policeman to drive, the policeman said, okay, I can't drive, don't go die. That is what is happening. So these things are pre-rejected. And they told the soldiers, come and don't move for the last three hours. After they have successfully carried out the invasion, adoption, and they all left, then the soldiers are gone. What are they going to do? Of what use is locking the stable when they see this out? Are you locking the stable to protect the food? Because the steel is already out. The horse is already out. How are you locking the stable? What did they come out to do? How did they know that they are killing that man? Who counted that? And how would 200 men move in the group without people who are saying that? You have military formations around there. Can't take you ever talk to an ambassador and tell the ambassador it's a jail break. It just will put the prison for them to get out. That's all. <laughs> Open up, Ankhater. Let's move away uh, from that. On the Disney newspaper, it talks about uh, uh, the IOC is killing local oil servicing companies in Nigeria. And a stakeholder has actually risen that concern. The Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board said that, uh, that um, international oil companies operating in the country are uh, maltreating the indigenous firm and, and making it, you know, in the sector and making it difficult for those local servicing oil companies to thrive. Do you think that this is anything to go by? Uh, also, looking at the fact that these IOCs are also divesting and the federal government, on the other hand, or the government has stated that uh, we, we need to be worried. I mean, the fact that they're divesting is a threat, uh, you know, to, to us as a people. W what do you make of this, Okunaba and Kataria? Okunaba? The IOCs. Yes, what, what is the question? So the question is, do you agree with the school of thoughts 
that the IOCs that are the killing IOC local are. oil servicing companies in Nigeria. The way this IOC is international, we're talking about the international oil companies well, and yeah, how they are yeah, maltreating. Well, the truth is, yeah, the truth is, um, it, it's, it's a cabal. And if you don't belong to that cabal, then you'll be frustrated. This might be the really changing. It's a cabal thing. So you must belong to that cabal. And for you to belong to that cabal, of course, you must have the nod of the president. I did not say president. I said president. Is it? And they make sure they frustrate every other. And that's why the local ones are really complaining. And again, you also talk of perception. You know, they believe and rely more. They trust the IOCs more than the local ones. And again, you don't also blame them because they, they, uh, how would I put it? Frauds, uh, fraudulent acts and, and capabilities of Nigerians are also responsible. That's the truth about it. And do they have the capacity? See, there are so many factors that you, you have to consider. So many. But then, if you have a government that wants the, the local world to go, of course, you can make a way for them. Yeah, through laws, your laws, enforcement, and so on. You can. I use River State, for example. You have Julius Beja constructing practically everything you can construct in River State. But do you know what? The laborers from the state are paid 700 naira per day. Modern slavery. Why? Because the government allowed it. They cried out. They protested. That's why I said the government has a role to play. But the government, rather than addressing it, they were arrested and detained. One is even dead. So it depends on the government. One, the enabling environment, two, the laws, and enforcement of those laws. Before now, they, they had no choice. They needed this oil. They are living now, they are addressing now because of security. But this is not the place today. It, the government went to sleep. Excuse me, not just the Buarez government. I'm talking of even the government that predated Buarez government. Why? Because they are also beneficiaries. That was the truth about it. So, it's all about the capacity. It can be addressed. It depends on the government. Well, I mean, from all that you have uh, talked about this morning and for everything that we always talk about, it seems that uh, the problem lies where there's no will. It feels like we're just a polity uh, Inertia. Know, that e Inertia. exists. And then you have leaders who do not have the willpower to make anything work because it feels like it's just no will. If there's a will, then... There will be a way. Yes, I just told you, that we have presidents that are uh, embarked on a long journey in the land of indiscretion in Russia. <laughs> well, and they are here to be back. <laughs> Okuna boy, it's always interesting. <laughs> I mean, speaking with you, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning. Of it's my pleasure, Mercy. Pres precise. You look good. You look quite good. Thank you. you I appreciate good. We look forward As to always, anyway. sharing your thoughts and some of uh, national issues as we progress towards 2023. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We take a break now, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here. Are we going to, you know, have a point where you have Nigerian citizens of the country getting to uh, that stage where they're so angry and so tired of the status quo and then they decide you know to troop out take a walk to the streets and you know to all parts uh, I mean we're talking about all parts of the country and ensuring that their voice and their demands are being met that would be our focus when we return please stay with us